So how do you build a PC cheapest way possible? It's a good question and in this video we're going to look at where you can ship out and where you want to spend most of your budget for your next gaming PC. Are we gonna get into it? right now right so let's start with the sort of main engine in your pc and i'm not talking about the graphics card although it should be said yes the graphics card or the gpu is the most critical component in any gaming pc and when it comes to the cpu what would i pick if i wanted to build the ultimate budget gaming pc well that is a good question the cpu is going to play a pretty important role for any gaming pc as many games actually benefit quite a lot from fast single core performance that said you don't want to empty your bank account completely here with that said i got two choices for you guys if you want to save as much cash as possible the intel core i5 9400f is arguably the best bang for the buck cpu coming in at around 139 us dollars it's a six core six thread processor that will serve you fantastic in games period that's it if your goal is only to play games this is the one to pick me personally however i like to do a lot of other things except just games on my pc and and so if you like me like to do other sort of things maybe you want to capture videos maybe you want to stream in the future or you want to use your pc for more types of things outside gaming well in that case let me present this is the ryzen 3600 it is based on AMD's latest sam 2 architecture and it's almost on par in terms of ipc with intel's skylake architecture it means that the single core performance is excellent on the cpu and as we can see from previous tests i've done the 36 600 is almost on par with Intel's flagship the 9900K for just a fraction of the price. But let's look at the specifications. So this one's got 6 cores and 12 threads with a base of 3.6 and a boost of 4.2. And for the most part, when you're gaming, you're going to stay above 4 GHz pretty much all the time. So to wrap this up, if your budget is super strict and you're only focusing on gaming, the Core i5-9400F is the answer. But if you want to do lots of stuff, more heavy loads, etc., the Ryzen 3600 is the way to go. Now, in any game, the graphics card will be the weakest link in the entire system. And picking the best graphics card right now was quite easy. I've been saying this for years now. I don't recommend anyone picking a graphics card in 2019 with less than 8 gigs of VRAM. And there is an excellent reason for that. Next-gen consoles are going to give every game outer a bump in system requirements. If you're thinking about keeping your gaming PC for a long time, 6 gigabytes of video memory will be obsolete in a few years but please feel free to question my statement if you think i'm wrong here anyway for the graphics card i'm picking the radeon rx 590 because of two reasons the vram and the performance so in terms of performance it's pretty much neck and neck with the gtx 1660 from nvidia who's only got six gigabytes of vram and also is 60 bucks more and right now you can pick up this gigabyte card rx 590s with 8 gigs of VRAM for just under $200. If your budget is strict and you want to save more, I highly recommend having a look at the used market. If your budget is super strict, I would recommend having a look at the RX 570, which can be found for under $100. Or you can also look into the GTX 1060. In terms of performance and frame rate, what can you expect here? Well, I wanted to show you guys the performance. Here we got a few popular games. I decided to also throw in a GTX 16. 60 to give you guys a better idea how things looks in comparison now keep in mind the gtx 1660 is pricier it has two gigabyte less vram and as you can see for the most part the performance is still more or less on par with that said, yeah, let's talk about RAM. So as far as RAM goes, we know that most games run fine on 8 gigabytes. I made several videos covering this in the past. For this cheap gaming PC, I'm picking two 4 gig sticks, which let us take advantage of dual channel, which will give us the best possible performance. Although, as we've seen from other benchmarks, running in single channel is not as bad as we first anticipated, especially on Ryzen. Anyway, as we know, games tend to be quite memory bad with hungry so picking fast ram is always uh, preferable as for ryzen and the way that the infinity fabric work and how the cpu communicates with the rest of the system fast clock ram is 
yeah, what we want to aim for. And this is a very reasonable choice. It can be perfectly paired with the Ryzen processors. This kit also works excellent if you end up picking the Intel platform. And when it comes to storage, it would be crazy not to pick an SSD, especially times like these when the price on flash-based media is on free fall. For this cheap budget gaming PC, I'm picking a 240GB drive from Kingston. That all said, if you can afford more, I highly recommend a 5GB one that would give you enough space for a couple of games. Obviously, if you have a budget that can afford it, adding a spinning hard drive is what I recommend if you want to be able to have more than just, I don't know, 5 games or so installed. And as for the main board, if you're picking the Intel platform, I recommend this one from MSI and this will do the trick for you, no problems. As for Ryzen, the Strix X470 from Asus is a brilliant motherboard, but it requires an update to work with Ryzen 3000 series. In order to get the Ryzen 3600 to work on this particular motherboard you need to first apply an update to the BIOS that will require a first gen or a second gen Ryzen processor and so if you don't have a friend or family member that can borrow you the first or second gen Ryzen you will need to look elsewhere this one for example from Asus got something called BIOS flashback that lets you plug in a USB stick on the back and update the BIOS without having to even start the system and the whole process takes you like one minute or something and I made the whole entire video showing you how it's done and this is what I highly recommend. Currently, you can find this main board, the Crosshair, which, by the way, is a top performing Asus motherboard for just around 179 US dollars if you buy this refurbished one. I know this one is a little bit on the higher side, guys, but trust me, this motherboard is worth it. Lastly, we got the case, and I'm going to leave this one open. And I think it's essential not just picking the cheapest one that you can find here. You want to pick something that speaks to you in terms of appearance. When I built the $1,000 gaming PC for my friend a couple of months ago, we ended up picking the H500i from NZXT. It is very versatile, it's easy to build in, it supports the most common ATX standard. It also got enough clearance for most CPU air coolers. It is not too big, but it's not too small. It comes with two pre-installed fans. It's got a software called Cam that lets you customize fan curves, as well as some nice RGB LED strips in a very elegant package. All of this without being too expensive. You can pick this up for around $100. But yeah, the point is, you need to find something that works for you. Again, I like to emphasize the importance of picking a case that you... <laughs> obviously will appreciate. I think it's vital that you take the time on this one. With that said, I'd like to give you guys a few pointers to help you in the right direction. If your budget is super tight, let's say under $50, you want to stay away from tempered glass. The reason for that is that tempered glass is quite expensive and so if you find a case in the sub $50 category, there is a high risk that they have been shipping out on something else. Quality brands to look for are NZXT, Fractal Design, Fan takes Cooler Monster as well as Corsair. They all make pretty good budget cases and for the most part you can expect thicker material, smart solutions, lots of cable holes and for cable management, USB 3 in the front as well as a few included case fans. As for no name brands, I'd say you want to avoid those at all costs. Last but definitely not least, as for the power supply or the PSU, this is what I would pick. It's got the basics like 80 plus certifications and enough headroom if you let's say you want to add a few more hard drives or even upgrade your graphics card. In case you have any questions as always please leave them in the comments below I'm gonna do my best to help you guys out as always feel free to join the discord server I'm going to stay in there and act as a support guy and if you got any technical difficulties I'm gonna do my best to help you guys out answering any questions you might have and yeah I guess that's pretty much it in the meantime thank you so much for watching this video and please watch either of these two videos for more awesome content but until next time you have an awesome day right bye